The Lord be with you and also with you. Welcome to First United Methodist Church and this online virtual service of worship. My name is David Osleason and I serve as the pastor here at First United Methodist Church. And while we can't be in our buildings in this time, we are together in spirit, near and far, worshiping our Creator God, Christ the resurrected Savior, and receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is the second Sunday of Eastertide, and this Sunday falls on Earth Day too. So we welcome you to worship in a spirit of creation care, of a hope for resurrection of the earth, and for a commitment of God's people to care for one another as we care for the creatures of the earth. If you are a member of First United Methodist Church, in your email, you'll find the bulletin for the service of worship. And if you are viewing uh, uh, and not a member of this congregation, you'll, you'll find the bulletin uh, attached to this Facebook announcement for our service this morning. We rejoice together that we are one across the miles in participating in this service of worship. Rejoice that the hope of God in Christ Jesus, the risen Savior, is with each and every one of us wherever we are. Welcome again to this service of worship. Join with me in our gathering song, Morning Has Broken. Let us sing together, friends. Joining the birds, let us sing together. Amen. Morning has broken like the first morning. Blackbird has spoken like the first bird. Praise for the sweet singing. Praise for the morning. Praise for the springing fresh from the world. Join with me in this Easter proclamation. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Again, thank you for joining us for this service of worship on the second Sunday of Eastertide and Earth Day. This is the 50th anniversary of Earth Day, and as such, the Church of Jesus Christ is called to give thanks and praise to our Creator and for the calling that's been placed upon us to be stewards of the earth. Christ is our helper in these things. First United Methodist Church is a reconciling, inclusive, welcoming congregation of people of all walks of life. So no matter where you come from, no matter where you're going, you are invited to participate fully in the life of First Church. We see everyone as God sees, with sacred worth and dignity. We invite all persons to participate in the life of the church regardless of your age, your ethnic background, your sexual orientation or gender identity, your family structure, your mental condition, marital status, family situation or economic standing. We are together in Christ Jesus our Lord. Even as we cannot be in our sanctuary together, gathered as community in this online fashion, we are still able to be a people of prayer together. So in this time, I would invite your prayers, wherever you are at, near or far, to be joined together in the spirit of Christ as we pray for the world facing the coronavirus. For those who have died of COVID-19 since we last worship, Lord, in your mercy. For all whose health is compromised by the coronavirus or other health issues, Lord, in your mercy. For healthcare workers and first responders and other public servants, Lord, in your mercy. For those who suffer from the economic impact of this virus, Lord, in your mercy. For our global, national, state, and local leaders managing the health crisis, Lord, in your mercy. For the medical, scientific communities of our world, for your wisdom, O God, to be in abundance for their efforts. Lord, in your mercy. God, it can be so overwhelming, but you tell us over and over again not to be afraid. In this Easter tide, help us to enter into every new morning in a spirit of love and humility for our life of faith. In the name of the resurrected Christ, we commend all these things to your keeping. We pray and we pray together. Amen. Amen. Join me in the call to worship. 
We walked with fear and darkness, but Easter happened. God made the sun to rise. Thank you, God, for sunshine and sky. We walked in a hard and merciless land, but Easter happened. Christ is alive and is here. Thank you, God, for the earth and waters. We walked into the mystery of life and death, but Easter happened. The Spirit gathers us far and near. Thank you, God, for the gift of creation. Blessed is God who has done great things. Let us worship. Sweep the rains, you fall, sunlit from heaven, like the first Today's Hebrew scripture reading is from Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 31. Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea, and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created humankind in God's own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food, and it was so. God saw that all he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Join with me in this prayer for Earth Day at 50. Thank you, God, for water, soil, and air, large gifts supporting everything that lives. Forgive our spoiling and abuse of them. Help us renew the face of the earth. Thank you, God, for minerals and ores, the basis of all building, wealth, and speed. Forgive our reckless plundering and waste. Help us renew the face of the earth. Thank you, God, for priceless energy stored in each atom gathered from the sun. Forgive our greed and carelessness of power. Help us renew the face of the earth. Thank you, God, for weaving nature's life into a seamless robe, a fragile whole. Forgive our haste that tempers unaware. Help us renew the face of the earth. Thank you, God, for making planet Earth a home for us and ages yet unborn. Help us to share, consider, save, and store. Come and renew the face of the Earth.
scripture reading is John chapter 12 verses 24 through 26 and John chapter 20 verses 19 through 31. Very truly I tell you unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies it remains just a single grain but if it dies it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it and those who hate their life in this world keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me and where I am there will my there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house were where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced. When they saw the Lord Jesus, Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. I woke up on Wednesday morning to a fresh blanket of snow outside. Perhaps you did too. A welcome surprise? No, but in the Midwest, we are used to strange April weather. Honestly, I was not encouraged by the snow, but it did help me to remember a few words from a poem I used as a devotional this past week. Resurrection by Mary Ann Bernard. Long before this winter's snow, I dreamt of this day's sunny glow and thought somehow my pain would pass with winter's pain and peace like grass would simply grow. But the pain's not gone. It's still as cold and hard and long. As lonely a pain has ever been, it cuts so deep and fear within. Long before this winter's snow, I thought that this day's sunny glow, the smiling children and growing things and flowers bright were brought by spring. Now I know the sun does shine, that children smile, and from the dark, cold grime, the grass and flower comes. It groans, yet sings. And through its pain, its peace begins. For me, the words of Mary Ann Bernard form an intersection between the second Sunday of Easter and Earth Day. There is so much upon us as the human community facing the coronavirus pandemic that Earth Day may not be registering on our radar screens very much at all, but the Earth has lessons to share with us about trusting our Creator and sustaining in faith in every season. For me, the spring awakening is providing hope and peace in this painful time. How shall we steward the earth that provides us with so many blessings? Will we commit to its resurrection? It's a question I'm asking of myself today, and I'll ask you too. We are just a week past the first Sunday of Easter when we read the story of the resurrection of Jesus, both Wonderful and a bit alarming, for the work of God has been done, and the reactions of Mary Magdalene, the other women, and the other disciples to this great mystery of life overcoming death. Oh gosh, here in the Gospel of John, the disciples are still coming to terms with the raising of Jesus from the dead. Firstly, let's remove any anti-Semitic tone from this ancient reading. There were many who wielded their power with corruption and with decisions, with death on their minds, religious authorities, Roman officials, and bloodthirsty crowds. While important to know who caused Jesus' death, it cannot compare with the one who caused Jesus' life to be restored. It was God's power to take what was crucified and bring out of death newness of life for Jesus. 
Rejoice, the seed that had died is bearing the fruit of love, telling us even in pain, peace begins. Jesus uses imagery from nature to tell of the life he will lie down and the new life to emerge. Seed buried in the ground to die with proper amounts of water and sunlight, minerals and genetic material emerges from the husk, pushing forth a shoot, breaking through the soil to reach heavenward, to blossom a flower through its pain. Its peace begins to bear what is only natural in creation. Ah, this is our link. The resurrection of Jesus, the Christ for humankind that comes with the early spring in our portion of the earth, is not so unlike the natural resurrection expressed by the earth, experiencing days blessed by increased sunlight, warmth, and nature, and nurture. For me in this pandemic time, this global pause in human physical community, which is one of the ways this time has been described, I need every expression of resurrection. I can see, I can hear, I can feel, I can experience, and I can incorporate it into my soul to bring it to life out of despair, out of grief, out of sorrow. How about you? In turn, I am sensing a need to invite God to bring resurrection to those I am in community with, near and far, in person or by phone, in my heart, if not within my embrace. While we are mindful of infections and our need to stay home, let us not be immune to resurrection for self and for others, and today for our earth too. We had winter again this week. Can we find a spring for this time and for our life together? Like I said before, the earth has a message to share with us and within it a call to care for its well-being. As reported by Kat Lonsdorf of National Public Radio, the town of Miharu, Japan, a small group of workers pounded posts into the ground to lay a grand pathway at the base of a giant cherry tree. It was the same path they'd laid every year, wide enough to give thousands of tourists a chance to walk up and marvel at the ancient tree as its cascading branches fill with delicate pink flowers dipping toward the ground. But with the coronavirus pandemic taking hold, it was starting to feel as if that pathway might be laid for no one, no visitors. It wouldn't be the first time the tree, known as the Takazukara, or waterfall cherry tree, bloomed alone. I think I got that pronunciation right. At more than a thousand years old, the tree has lived through wars and famines and earthquakes and storms, even a nuclear meltdown, and now a virus. In the hundreds of thousands, people would visit the tree to see this majestic and consistent sign of spring in the worst of human times and in the worst of natural times too. Taking care of the tree is a job for the whole community. Neighbors visit and pull weeds or help fertilize the ground the way that their ancestors did hundreds of years ago. A small shrine at the foot of the tree is filled with offerings, rice and salt, a bottle of sake or two. Says one caretaker, the, what, for me, the tree is a reminder that nature is strong. Nature can get through anything. This tree has lived so long, and the longer you live, the more bad events you see, more tragedies, he said. So she, the tree, will see more bad things, but she'll also see good. Life is layers, he said. Layers of bad and good. Layers of good. Layers of bad. We are in the layers of life, aren't we, friends? The tree, our earth, our call, born of our faith, invites us to pray. And as we pray, we commit again to protect, and we commit again to preserve. 
not only the cherry trees, but the olive trees in Spain, Italy, and Greece being ransacked by a pathogen, a, a bug of its own wiping out ancient orchards, or the savannas of East Africa experiencing locust infestations. The rainforests of Brazil continue to undergo a devastating amount of government-sanctioned deforestation. Oh, the earth suffers its infections, natural and human-made to be sure. Our unfaithfulness to the commitment in Genesis, the imperative given to us by God to be good stewards when we have failed. Our failure causes the earth pain. And as our home suffers, we suffer as human community too. Studies from Cornell University see links between this current pandemic and increasing global food demand, the clearing of habitats for agricultural expansion, animals and humankind in increasing contact and conflict. The ecological prophet of the world, primatologist Jane Goodall, makes the case we as humankind have increased the likelihood of future pandemics because of our disinterest in environmental preservation and indifference to earth suffering. This is a heavy reproach to confess, isn't it not? Where is truth in this? Let us continue to listen. Let us continue to learn into God's wisdom. But as we listen and as we learn, we should not lose heart. God's grace leads us to awareness, investing us, investing within us the ability to change. There's a lot to let die. Despair, greed, indifference. There is a time to take up the tools of faith, to plant the seeds, to look forward to a harvest of resurrection again. Our example is Jesus Christ, who is, in the words of John McLeod Campbell, the green blade riseth from the buried grain, wheat that in the dark earth many days had lain, love lives again. What was dead has been, love is come again, like wheat that springeth green. What a metaphor for Jesus' resurrection, says Michael Hahn, yes? A wonderful, wonderful image. Mm. Last week, Japan declared a state of emergency. The country has more than 7,000 confirmed COVID-19 cases with more than 100 deaths. But also last week, the Takazukara, that beautiful, giant cherry tree, tucked into a valley between two hills, burst into a cascade of delicate pink flowers just as it has for more than 1,000 years. And it will bloom again. Let's have faith that it will. A faith similar to that which God has given to us. The same God who raised from the dead the one who came to bring life, his calling for the disciples to love one another as God loves them, can be extended to creation love too. It can, and it should. Among the myriad lessons this time presents to us about what we value in our health, in our security, in our leadership, is a value about the, is a lesson about the value to be placed upon the earth too. Appreciation is great, but preservation is our work a commitment to stewardship and ongoing earth resurrection. Amid coronavirus global pandemic concerns, Earth Day Network, the global organizer of Earth Day, will mark the 50th anniversary much differently this year. Today, we are encouraged to participate in the first digital Earth Day, a global digital mobilization to address the most urgent threats to people on the planet. Um, if you've got some time on your hands, mm, check out the Earth Day Network at earthday.org. 
The Northern Illinois Conference of the United Methodist Church's Sustainability Task Force shares these ideas to celebrate Earth Day that can help to bring resurrection to the earth and maybe even resurrection to our grieving, despairing, and often really uh, broken heartedness in this time. Oh, we need that resurrection. I think you'll find it by taking a walk around the neighborhood and maybe picking up some trash. Or start planting your flower and vegetable gardens. Let us be mindful of nature and wildlife and the yard and garden choices. Focus on clean earth solutions and better sustainable plants. Give praise to God as you plant for all the benefits the earth uh, is receiving in this time of slowing down of pollution. As, as minor as it is, it is an impact for the good. Pray over the food you eat today and for an increased commitment to sustainable practices and pathways to eco-justice for farmers and producers and consumers alike. Continue to practice stewardship mindfully after this pandemic is over. Meditate outdoors and be mindful of the air and the wild creatures, the coming to life of the perennials, the nesting of the robins and other birds in our Midwest region. Can this time of such dramatic change to human life upon this earth, economics and health, lead to lasting better habits? Oh Lord, none of this should be happening now. None of this pandemic should be happening now. And so many people are being lost and loved ones' lives are in despair. And so we don't take this call to earth healing lightly, but it is a practice by which we can dramatically change the future of our planet. Could earth healing be a common practice now and into the future? What will be produced? Reprinted during the Spanish flu, this poem written by Kathleen O'Mara echoes the hope of resurrection for the people of God and our whole planet too. And people stayed at home and read books and listened and they rested and did exercises and made art and played and learned new ways of being and stopped and listened more deeply. Someone meditated, someone prayed, someone met their shadow and people began to think differently and people healed. And in the absence of people who lived in ignorant ways, dangerous, meaningless, and heartless, the earth also began to heal. And when the danger ended and people found themselves, they grieved for the dead and made new choices and dreamed of new visions and created new ways of living and completely healed the earth just as they were healed. Thanks be to God. Amen. Join with me in this prayer for earth stewardship. Creator God, you make all things and weave them together in an intricate tapestry of life. Teach us to respect the fragile balance of life and to care for all the gifts of your creation. Guide by your wisdom those who have power and authority, that by the decisions they make, life may be cherished, and a good and fruitful earth may continue to show your glory and sing your praises. Almighty God, you have called each of us by our life and faith to tend and keep the garden of your creation. Give us wisdom and reverence for all your plants and animals who share this planet with us and whose lives make possible our own. Help us to remember that they too love the sweetness of life and join with us in giving you praise. Amen. Let us continue in a time of prayer with our petitions of joy and concern. As I offer these petitions, please know that your prayers are of value this morning, and I invite you to share them with me through my email, Pastor David at parkridgeumc.org, and then I will share them with our prayer tree. For these joys and concerns upon our hearts and minds, the Spirit of Christ is with us. Let us pray together. 
O Holy One, you have gathered us near and far to be a church, to be a church together in spirit, and as such we minister in this spirit. Let us not be without hope, O God. Our faith is strong, and your love is even stronger. Together, let us pray for the people of this congregation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for those who are sick and those who suffer and those in trouble. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for our health and wellness, minds, bodies, and spirits. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for the concerns of our neighborhoods, the communities in which we live. We pray for our county, state governments. We pray, O oh Lord, for our country. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for the world, its peoples, and its leaders. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for the medical personnel and scientific communities of our nation and world. We pray for global health organizations and for those who provide care locally at bedsides, in nursing homes, and in hospitals. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for the earth you have given to our care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for those at this time who are now unemployed, those who have been furloughed, those whose economic well-being has been threatened, those who are just hanging on. O oh, Holy Lord, give comfort to their hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for the Church Universal, its leaders, its members, and its mission. We pray for those of every religious faith who seek your common good, O oh God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray in communion with the saints. We pray for our dearly departed ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. O oh, Holy One, we ask for the gift of your abiding presence, your great love, and your awesome hope to be with us as we continue to be a people at prayer together near and far. Hear us as we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thanks be to God for you on this uh, Easter tide morning. Let us rejoice in the opportunity that is before us now to share in God's gifts through this invitation to offering. Your continued financial giving as a member of this church enables First United Methodist Church to be strong and our outreach to be transformative and our faith community alive as the Church of Jesus Christ out and in the world. The body of Christ is the church alive. Faithful ministry, that is our call. At First UMC, we are loving God, and we are loving our neighbors. And we invite you to be a part of the outreach and mission of this congregation right here in Park Ridge. New Hope Community Food Pantry, we invite your continued food donations. Meal support for Lutheran General Hospital uh, ER and uh, other staff. It's happening on April 20th, a wonderful chicken dinner that's being supplied by our Outreach and Meals Ministry for about 50 people. We rejoice in that effort. Our United Methodist Women continue to make masks.
And our prayer shawl ministries are providing prayer squares, showing God's love and comfort for hospital workers and first responders. And we rejoice in these efforts and, and more. Now more than ever, the church is alive and is called into the world to do its good work. If you are without a church home at this time in your life, I'll invite you to consider uh, sticking around and watching our online worship services. And when we're back together to come and fellowship and worship with us and share in this ministry, this mission of loving God and loving neighbor. We'd be delighted to send you information about the church. You can email me at, w, at uh, Pastor David at Pastor David at parkridgeumc.org. And we'll be about uh, continuing in our faithful mission to do a uh, church out and alive in the world. For this time, may we rejoice in God's grace and the generosity of spirit and the call that is placed upon us to be in loving ministry now and always. Thank you for your generosity of offering and of commitment in this time. Thanks be to God. Amen. resurrection love of Jesus Christ and the power of the Spirit be with us now and always, bringing us together near and far as community of Christ to love God, to love self, and to love our neighbors. In a spirit of resurrection, may we share the joy with, uh, with God's good and uh, delicate earth. Uh, rejoice that we are called to be its stewards. Amen? Amen. Uh, remember our social media project. As part of our Passing of the Peace, I encourage you to share with us uh, a promise for Earth Day, a sign or symbol of resurrection life in your life. Maybe it's something around your home. Maybe it's out in your yard. Uh, maybe in a flower. Uh, maybe in the sunshine. Maybe in uh, just a beauty that you are enjoying at this time. So share with us uh, via the comments and Facebook or send me an email with that uh, picture of resurrection, your Earth Day uh, photo, and uh, we'll be sharing that with our community in Christ. Thanks be to God for you. Enjoy the day. Blessings. Blessings. Blessings.